ഹലോ ഡിയേഴ്സ് വെൽക്കം ടു ദ ക്ലാസ് ഓൺ റീഹാബിലിറ്റേഷൻ ഓഫ് ന്യൂറോജനിക് ബ്ലാഡർ ഇൻ ദ റീഹാബിലിറ്റേഷൻ ഫീൽഡ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ കോമൺലി എൻകോഡ് പ്രോബ്ലം ഇസ് ദ വേർഡിംഗ് ഡിസ്ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ദിസ് വേർഡിംഗ് പ്രോബ്ലം മേ ബി ഡ്യൂ ടു ന്യൂറോളജിക്കൽ ഡിസീസസ് ഫിസിക്കൽ ഇൻവയറമെൻറ്റ്സ് കോഗ്നേറ്റീവ് ഡിസോർഡേഴ്സ് യൂസ് ഓഫ് മെഡിസിൻസ് എക്സെട്രാ വി ദ ഫിസിയാട്രിസ് ഷുഡ് ബി ഏബിൾ ടു ഐഡൻറ്റിഫൈ ദിസ് പ്രോബ്ലം ഏർലി so that we can treat this condition effectively and can provide regular follow up the common neurological conditions with bladder involvement are spinal cord injuries stroke traumatic brain injuries etc here we will be focusing on neurogenic bladder dysfunction seen in spinal cord injuries we should have a good idea regarding the basic anatomy wording physiology pathology pharmacological management necessary investigations surgeries and how to we should know how to approach a patient with body dysfunction in a patient with spinal cord injury so we can deal these sections one by one starting okay urinary tract as you all know is divided into two parts and apart tract with the kidneys and ureters and a lower tract with the urinary bladder and urethra this picture shows the basic anatomy of kidney as we all know there is an outer cortex and an inner medulla with 5 to 10 papillae in each kidney and this papillae will drain urine into the major and minor calyces and there is a central collecting area called the pelvis and from the pelvis there arises the ureter which drains urine into the urinary bladder ureter ureters are thick muscular tubes which drains urine from the kidneys to the bladder it has got three parts an upper part middle part and a lower part and there are three areas of constriction which are the sites of calculus formation one is at the pelvic ureteral ureteric junction second is at the pelvic brim and third is at the ureterovesical junction this is a picture showing urinary bladder shows that there is an apex which is directed upwards towards the umbilicus and a base which is directed backwards there is a neck which is the lowest and the most fixed part of the bladder the second picture shows a, a trigon which is a small tri- triangular area over the low part of the base of the bladder the two upper lateral openings are from bilateral ureters and there is a single lower opening is the urethral orifice now we can look on to the wall of the urinary bladder there are four layers there is a innermost layer is the urothelium or the mucosa which contains the basal cells intermediate cells and the umbrella cells the second layer is the submucosa this contains fibril shaped collagen the collagens commonly seen are type 1 3 and 4 the third layer is the muscle layer or the detrusum which constitutes 60 to 70 percent of the total wall it contains circular and longitudinal muscle layers fourth layer is the serosal layer which is outermost layer this is a histological picture of bladder muscles which shows that muscle fibers are arranged into vesicles in random directions this was noticed by danger et al in 1982 individual cells within a bundle are connected to the to form a functional syncytium this architecture is different from the discrete circular and longitudinal smooth muscles in the ureter this is very important now moving to the urethra male and female urethra male urethra has got will have a length of 18 to 20 cm it has got prostatic membranous and spongy part the most widest part is the prostatic part and least dilatable part is the membranous part and female urethra is 4 cm long and it corresponds to the upper part of the upper part that is the prostatic urethra 
there are two sphincters one is external and another is internal sphincter internal sphincter actually is not a true anatomic sphincter not responsible for maintaining continence it is supplied by sympathetic non adrenergic nerves whereas external sphincter is composed of skeletal muscles and it is supplied by somatic pudendal nerves now moving on to an important part of this class neuroanatomy of bladder and urethra there are three important sets of nerve supply to the urinary bladder and urethra and they are sympathetic nerve supply which arises from t11 to l2 which passes through the hypogastric nerve parasympathetic nerve supply which arises from the s2 to s4 and it passes through the pelvic nerve and finally third one the somatic nerve supply which passes through the pudendal nerve it arises from s2 3 and 4 you can have little more explanation In the previous slide we have already said that there are three sets of peripheral nerve supply the sympathetic one arises from the intermedial lateral gray horn from t11 to l2 its stimulation causes the contraction of the internal sphincter and relaxation of the detrusor causing bladder filling the parasympathetic areas parasympathetic nerve supply arises from the intermedial lateral gray horn of s2 to s4 called the sacral parasympathetic nucleus its stimulation causes contraction of the detrusor and relaxation of urethra this causes body somatic pudendal nerve causes contraction of external urethral sphincter the nerves arises from one of nucleus located along the lateral border of the ventral horn these nerves contains afferent and efferent axons that is sensory and motor this picture shows the cross sectional view of spinal cord at the sacral level afferents are seen on the left side and efferents are seen on the right side we can see one of nucleus on lateral side of the ventral horn and there is sacral parasympathetic nucleus etc now moving to afferent pathways storage and evacuation of urine are controlled by a complex interaction between local spinal level and brain circuits normal urinary bladder will spend more time for storage of urine during micturition detrusor contracts and the sphincter relaxes this switch relies on sensory signals which passes through the pelvic hypogastric and pudendal nerves they are the mixed nerves afferent neurons of the pelvic and pudendal nerves are contained or uh, arises from the sacral drg deferent neurons of the hypogastric nerve arises from the rostral lumbar drg the dorsal root ganglion neurons drg neurons lumbar and sacral carry the sensory information from lower urinary tract to the second order neurons in the spinal cord these are the these are the these second order neurons provides the basis for spinal reflexes and ascending pathways to higher brain regions involved in micturition continence and mediation of sensation the pelvic nerve afferents are the small myelinated a delta and small and the unmyelinated c axons the myelinated a delta fibers are, ne are needed in nor are needed only in the in the normal wording and they are response in a graded fashion whereas the unmyelinated c fibers will be silent in the normal wording in spinal cord injury the silent c fibers will get wake up and this causes uninhibited bladder contraction this is a picture showing the myelinated a delta fibers active in normal patients whereas in unmyelinated un unmyelinated c fibers are active in patients with spinal cord injury now we can 
ലുക്ക് ഇൻ ടു ദ നെർവ് സപ്ലൈ ഓഫ് ദ യൂ യൂറിത്തൽ സ്പിങ്ടർ ഇന്റേണൽ യൂറിത്തൽ സ്പിങ്ടർ ഈസ് അണ്ടർ ദ കൺട്രോൾ ഓഫ് ഓട്ടോണോമിക് നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റം ആൻഡ് ഓൺ സിമ്പത്തറ്റിക് സ്റ്റിമുലേഷൻ ഇറ്റ് പ്രൊഡ്യൂസസ് ദ കൺട്രാക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ ഇന്റേണൽ സ്പിങ്ടർ എക്സ്റ്റേണൽ സ്പിൻഡർ ഓൺ ദ അതർ ഹാൻഡ് ഹാസ് ഗോട്ട് സൊമാറ്റിക് ഇന്നർവേഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഓൺ സ്റ്റിമുലേഷൻ ഇറ്റ് പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് സ്പിങ്ടർ ക്ലോഷർ ഡെഫറൻസ് ആസ് വി ഓൾറെഡി സെറ്റ് originates from the one of nucleus and it passes through the pudendal nerve to the external urethral now we can look into the influences of central nervous system on lower urinary tract facilitation and inhibition of the autonomic nervous system are under the control of central nervous system pontine micturition center is largely influenced by the cortex but it is also in, under the influence of cerebellum pons medulla etc higher control is achieved through efferents that ascends to the sensory cortex descending fibers from the motor cortex reaches the sacral parasympathetic nucleus and on of these are the areas involved in the regulation of urine storage these are thalamus insula prefrontal cortex anterior cingulate periaqueductal gray pag the pons medulla cerebellum and the supplementary motor area or the sm this is a working model uh, of for brain control of micturition showing two possible continence mechanisms the one is uh, one is the normal one and other is the backup mechanism the normal mechanism is marked as red and this operates when there is normal sensation of bladder filling it depends upon the tonic inhibition of brain stem the inhibition is switched off for voiding a backup mechanism that is in yellow color corresponds to the abnormal sensation or urgency it may operate via brain stem nuclei such as l region pondine storage center or by that is the pondine storage center or by modulating the sympathetic input to the bladder and urethra the dark blue arrows you can see in the picture shows a possible circuit concerned with monitoring safety and maintaining continence without conscious sensation this ends the basic anatomy of lower urinary tract next class will be on voiding physiology thank you